Hello and welcome back to Uruuru Niwa. I'm Mike Charlton. Uh, last time we were looking at Legends Mode and we uh, discovered many interesting things about the world. We found a hero, the last of his civilization, who is living all by himself in a ruined fortress and who had explored the depths of the world uh, by himself as a, as a child actually. He was only 13 years old. He went down to the depths of the world, which is pretty amazing actually. So this time we're going to get into playing the adventure mode. One of the things I'm going to do, I'll show you on this page here. I have a text editor open. It's called Emacs. Probably, especially for playing in fortress mode, I think probably a, a spreadsheet is actually the easiest way to keep track of things. But I tend to use this. I just wrote down a couple of notes here um, because as you saw in the previous episode, my memory is not <laughs> fantastic. And especially these names are so hard to remember. So this is the civilization that we were interested in. The town of Sculpture. The, we had the two fortresses, uh, Pulley Rooters, which was the the first one that was created. And it was, it was destroyed actually in the year four. Um, and this is where Zon Prestige Papers, who we're trying to find, that's where he lives. Uh, and the other one is in is Fence Relief. Now, what I'm gonna do quickly, I seem to remember that Fence Relief seems to have a library in it. I'm just going to have a quick look in Legends mode again. Okay, so let's have a look at sites. And again, I've already forgot. No, it's Fence Relief, isn't it? So we're gonna F again for filter. Fence relieve. And now if I page down, what you can see here is that there have been, so in 44, you can see, sorry, in 43, Midsummer of 43, my friend competition was authored by Zon Paddlestoker. This is not the Zon we're interested in, this is a different Zon. Uh, and then actually you can see here that in the summer of 124, so I, I may be correct in fact, the elf uh, Atera Guild, Guild Twigs moved to study in Fence Relief. So, so he's gone to study in Fence Relief, which implies that there's actually a, a library there. And this actually gave me an idea when I was thinking about this before. So when we make our adventurer, we're, we're going to give him a bit of a quest. He's, he's going to go and interview, um, who was it again? It was Zon Prestige Papers. And we're gonna try and find out something about Zon Prestige Papers. And our adventurer, I think is going to be uh, basically a journalist. He's going to he's going to document this and he's going to go back and he's going to tell stories about what happened to Zon Prestige Papers so that other people can learn about um, this event. And it is possible we might even be able to make it, write a book about it. I'm not sure. I've never actually written a book in the game. It is possible to do, uh, but usually you can't find paper, which is a problem. Let's get on with it. All right, so what we're going to do though, before we do this, I'm just actually gonna quit Dwarf Fortress. What I wanted to do, I'm back in the Dwarf Fortress directory again, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into uh, data. CD means change directory. Uh, if you're in DOS, I think it's the same. You can see there's a save directory. The ones with the slashes on the end are directories, and the ones without the slashes on the end are files, uh, in case you're wondering. So I'm gonna go into save here, and again, I'm gonna list. And then you can see there's all these directories. Now, some of these have nice names, like Hospital, Hospital Legends, Kanban, Kanban Legends, and then I have Region 1, Region 2. So these are all my saved games, because I actually have a lot ongoing. I tend to get bored of one world, and then I go into another world for a while. But I like to rename them, and so I'm gonna do that with Region 4. So I'm just going to, since I, the name, if you recall, is the Universes of Destiny, I'm going to rename Region 4 to be Destiny. So, and to rename something, you actually move it, MV, region four, and we're just gonna call it destiny. Now the other thing I want to do is, because I want to actually have access to the, the history of the world while I'm playing the game. And to be able to do that, you need to copy the save directory. And it's very easy, uh, you just copy the directory. So I'm just gonna copy uh, destiny to destiny legends. And that way I have access to it. Ah, sorry. Um, in you have to um, you have to copy recursively. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking like a bit of a noob here, but I, I do. I have actually used this for thirty odd years. <laughs> it's amazing what you can forget. All right, now we're going to start playing our game. So, ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, we 
Start Playing starts a new game and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find our Destiny directory. So there's Destiny. You can see I, I can choose either Destiny or Destiny Legends. Um, so I'm going into Destiny. And then you get to choose again, do I want to do Dwarf Fortress, Adventurer, or Legends. So this time I'm going Adventurer. So we have to make our nice journalist. So it takes a while for it to spin up. Now I have to point out that uh, uh, actually, here it it kind of spins the world. It 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 actually runs the world, updating the world for two weeks. That's what that's what you can't just like like end on one day and start a new adventure the next day. It actually it actually runs the world for another two weeks. So you always have to wait two weeks in between events. Um, and I have to point out that adventure mode is probably the least developed part of the game. So there's lots of things that are just basically placeholders. In adventure mode and a lot of things that don't work right a lot of things that are that seem to be absolutely pointless or are in fact absolutely pointless um, and so it takes a bit of experience to find a way to play the game and make it fun because it can be incredibly boring this this aspect of the game and that's why most people don't play adventure mode but once you once you understand kind of the bits that work and and way play styles that work for you it can be really 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 fun so i'm going to show you a really different play style here I, this is really unusual i think most people tend to go and kill everything that they go to we're not going to try and kill anything in particular we may, we may not actually even get into a fight we're going to talk with uh, zon prestige papers and then we're going to try and spread his story around the world and it'll be quite a short series i think we can choose different uh, races uh, you'll see on the right hand side as I as I kind of scroll through this it highlights in blue and these are the basically what it says is if you pick one of these characters these are the places that you can start from I actually want to start in fence relief now this is just using the up and down arrow or you can use a numeric keypad I don't actually have a numeric keypad and um, so I can't use it for the status this this indicates kind of how powerful you are when you start. So if you're a peasant, it means you're quite you're quite weak. If you're a hero, you're fairly strong. And if you're a demigod, you're quite strong. I'm going to start as a hero because I'm actually worried. When we go to Bully Ridders, which is the place we're going to, it might be a very dangerous place. So I want to have some way of defending myself. Uh, otherwise, I probably would just pick a, pe a peasant. So let's go with that. In we go and then we get to choose what civilization we want to start in now you'll remember perhaps so the confederacy of crystal is actually human civilization and you see on the right hand side this is where they are here um, so you can start as a dwarf in human territory because there are dwarves living in human territory we could start as part of the exalted shield and you can see exalted shields all through here or we can start in the realm of creating and the realm of creating is also a human civilization so in through here now the thing is we want to start again like I said in a uh, fence relieved so that's currently owned by the exalted shield so we're going to choose exalted shield one of the things that is in some ways nice in some ways not so nice about adventure mode is that when you start adventure mode you're your character is kind of poofed into existence. He has no history at all. What that means is that you can kind of kind of tailor the character exactly the way you want. I think that's the intent of it, is, is to say, okay, we're not using an existing character that's already had some history in the world. We're going to just create someone new and they're just going to be, by magic, inserted into the world, inserted into the history. So what we need to do is we need to choose our stats. You'll see here that we've got attributes remaining. So those are points. That you can use and this is this is kind of how many points we've already spent so we've spent five points in each one of these things that makes us average in everything now one of the things I want to do is I'm going to actually increase memory I think memory allows us having good memory allows us to to remember the maps where we go into places so I'm going, I'd like a, a decent memory and as you can see when I went plus um, to get to above average it took five points but as you increase it, it uses up more points essentially and we are a, a journalist so i actually want um, good linguistic ability we don't have super amounts of points so i'm not going to use that much social awareness is actually very useful because uh, we we will need 
um, some companions to help us survive. And I may actually, although I think it may be useless, I may actually just use the empathy because we we are a uh, journalist, and I think journalists need some empathy. Um, this is just for role play. Now we have 15 points left, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase our agility. Um, that will help us dodge things if we need to. I, I think we'll probably increase our strength a bit. Um, that allows us to carry things and move more quickly. Do you know what? I think I'm going to do endurance. And the reason I'm doing endurance is because that way it makes it easier for us to run away from things, and, and that's what we're going to tend to be doing. Uh, that's just using plus and minus to adjust these values. Now, what you do is you go to the right with the arrow keys to get these skills. So on the left is, is the attributes, and on the right is skills. Now, generally speaking, it doesn't necessarily make that much sense to have skill in a, a weapon, because you can actually build up that skill fairly easily. But I'm going to actually add a mark, Axe Dwarf uh, by pressing plus again. I just want to make him a novice Axe Dwarf, because that guarantees he gets an axe. So I think I'm going to make him Axe Dwarf. I'm not going to bother with a uh, fighter or archer. Observer is actually very useful and I'm actually going to put two points at least in there. I may put more because observer allows us to observe the other person who's attacking us. And so it allows us to, in fact, I will, I'm just going to go to competent because that allows us many more defensive uh, opportunities. I am also going to get novice swimmer and novice climber uh, because we may need to swim across rivers we may need to climb in trees and being a novice climber actually makes it easier to climb in trees um, and trees are really annoying to climb in i don't tend to use shields very much i'll make him a novice shield user just so that he actually makes sure he gets a shield when we start we're going to make him a good dodger though um, at least adequate i think in fact we may make him competent we'll have to adjust these later perhaps wrestler wrestling is very useful but we can do that ourselves we can build that up ourselves um, all of these things are useful, but I'm not going to bother with. Again, I'm going to make him a reader. That makes him literate. I'm also going to make him a wordsmith, so he can uh, write documents, and a writer. I probably will make him a speaker. This is kind of unusual. You wouldn't ever do this in, in normal games. But because we're a journalist, I think I'm going to actually at least make these novice. And I think that's good. So we've got four points left, which we means that we can stick it in something and I think I'll probably I might just make him I might just make him just up his I can't actually I don't have enough points up his uh, axe dwarf so I think maybe we're good so that's good um, you have some you have some points left over but sometimes you can't use them so it's fine all right in this case we press enter for done I uh, don't press escape because you'll lose all the work you've just done and I will press enter Go to the next one. Now here is where we uh, get told the name of our character, and you'll see uh, the name is Adil Zubanthebam. Adil Zubanthebam. That's a really cool name. Banner hushed. Um, so you can actually change your name if you want. If you can see here, you can set your first name. You can customize your name. Uh, you can set a random name. The other thing here is you can see that we are a female. The little plus that the circle with the plus is a female and the uh, circle with the arrow is male. I'll leave you to imagine how I remember that this is male. Now the thing is, what we want to do is we want to actually start in Fencer Leaf. So right now it's saying, okay, we're newly minted lieutenant of the great Sarvish Noise Cloister in Miragral. We don't actually want to be in Miragral. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is this background here, you can minus and plus. And if you go minus, you become a peasant. You're not that important in the world. If you go plus, it means you're like a lieutenant in some army or something like that. Um, and so, but you'll notice every time I minus and plus, that it changes my location. All right, and that's that's what we want to do. We want to just keep changing our location until we until we start in uh, venture leave because that's where we want to be. I don't really care if I'm a peasant or if I'm uh, locally important. I just want to be in fence relief. So this is ceiling tool, cave sacks, armor trample, razor clean, bolt stricken, knowing constructs. That's a cool name, knowing constructs. Raven page, urn echo, castle breaches, castle beaches, urn echo again, treaty virgins, cave sacks again, trumpet rain. Could take a while. Abbey havens, 
Cudgel Lucid, Pillar Stroke, Play Whipped. It's because this is like the biggest, <laughs> the biggest civilization. It's got about a million cities, so we're just gonna have to keep going. Armor Cosmos, Bodice Blots, Boatfish. You remember Boatfish? Okay. So we're back into knowing constructs. And I, I'm, I'm happy with knowing constructs. And we can be a fortress guard in uh, knowing constructs. And so this is our description of our character. So you, you can say she's short. Uh, her hair is clean shaven, which I think means that she's bald um, or that she, she shaves her head. Um, her small lobed narrow ears are very short. She has clear voice. She has somewhat narrow slate gray eyes that are wide, slightly wide set. Her hair is amber and her skin is pale brown. So I can actually believe that her hair here being clean shaven means that she doesn't have a beard and that she actually has hair on her head, which is amber. Um, and um, so it says the character's appearance is governed by local population information. Certain shapes and colors may not occur without full randomization. So you can change uh, the appearance if you're not happy with it, but I'm quite happy with that. I think that's quite nice. I'm done with that. And then we have some more information about our character. It says she does not see the attainment of knowledge as important and does not care about friendship. She dreams about creating a great work of art. Now the thing is, this is probably not the best description for a journalist. So I think we're going to try and change some of this thing. So, so we can go to the full customization here. Um, and so what we're going to do is this is quite complicated and I'm not going to try to explain it very much, but basically what you do is you highlight the bits that you that you want. So if we were saying we want to be very loyal, then you use the less sign sign. You see how it's turning green? So if I go, sorry, left arrow, go it goes to the left, and I go right arrow, it goes to the right. And so the civilization norm is where it has this little C here. You can see here that, for instance, that she doesn't really care about friendship. I don't mind if she doesn't care about friendship, to be honest, that's fine. She doesn't really care about power, that's good. She cares, I think she cares a lot about the truth. We're gonna move that up. Cunning, eloquence, I think she definitely needs to care about elegance. Fairness, I don't really care about. Decorum, whatever, it doesn't matter. Tradition, artwork, cooperation, independence, stoicism. I think she's gonna be very stoic. Introspection, I think, because she likes to read, perhaps. Self-control, who knows. Tranquility, harmony, whatever. Merriment, craftsmanship. Maybe she's not so interested in craftsmanship, to be honest. Martial prowess, she doesn't care. Skill, she thinks. Uh, hard work, of course, is important. Sacrifice, I think she's a journalist. Sa journalists really do have to sacrifice a lot. Competition, maybe she doesn't care. Perseverance, probably she does care. Leisure time, yeah, she doesn't need leisure time. Commerce, she doesn't care. Romance, we're going to put it down, like this is down here. You can't actually do romance in the game, so it's fine where it is. Nature, she, yeah, she doesn't care about nature. Peace, doesn't care about peace. And knowledge, we want to actually say she's very important about knowledge. And then for these things here, these are other things that you can modify as well. So she's not easily angered, for instance. You can see it's light blue, it's really hard to see. But honestly, I think the rest of this, I'm just not gonna care about. So now you see we have much more information because I changed quite a few things. She dreams about mastering a skill. Now I think we're gonna try and change her dream as well. It may not be possible, we'll press G. Let me see here, change dream and goal. See what happens. She, great work of art. Yeah, I think that's, I, I think writing is a great work of art, if I remember correctly. So I think that sounds much better. So I think we're done with that and we press enter to go. So you finally got your equipment together, such as it is. Now it's time for action and adventure. And back, I think we've probably gone long enough, so I think I'm going to call this an episode. And we will come back next time for the actual adventures of Adil Zulbanthaban. That is a really nice name. Until then, this is Uru Uru Niwa, I'm Mike Charlton, and I'll see you next time. Bye.